best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. Usually I just stop whenever I'm on my way back home to Eau Claire. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to go by yourself because they're not saying anything anymore. The day is coming when Jake Dowell will host a gathering at his home. His mother, Vicky, will be there. Friends and relatives, his teammates from the NHL and the University of Wisconsin, his wife, Carly. They will all be there on the day when Jake Dowell finds out how he is going to die. Those are the people that would be there for me. It's just such a scary thing that you have to just absolutely just be ready to accept your fate either way and it's basically the flip of a coin. He's played on a Stanley Cup winning team. As a U.S. junior, he won a gold medal. Through six NHL seasons, he's never been afraid to mix it up. But at 28, now a center iceman for the Minnesota Wild. Jake Dowell has a terrifying secret. A secret concealed inside his own body. This is a different kind of fear that I just, uh, I don't really know how to handle it. The reason Jake lives with fear I get this rests deep within this broken man. His 59-year-old father, John. He can't do anything else except watch TV. And he will tell me that he'll get tears in his eyes when um, something's going on with one of the kids. But he, he said, you know, I can't even cry. I can't even cry anymore. Number 19. Jake this was a young Jake with his dad. Very, very, very proud of him. His father's voice would carry across the ice at their local rink in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, some 90 miles east of Minneapolis. I knew if I had a bad game in hockey or he didn't think I worked hard enough, I was always asking to ride home with my mom because I didn't want to sit and hear it. Yet Jake had his older brother Luke looking out for him. He was a great athlete growing up and obviously he was a kid that I looked up to a lot and he was an awesome big brother. If somebody was picking on you or giving you a hard time? Oh, it was done, it was settled. But as Jake and Luke grew older, there was a change in their father. Screaming, and um, he would be right, he, he'd get in personal space, and I'm screaming at the other side, you know, it, it was so awful. Luke and my dad were yelling at each other and they were in the kitchen, and there was some shoving, and so I got in the middle of it and grabbed my dad, and uh, we went to the ground, What's that like to watch your husband do that to your children? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. But there was. In the fall of 2002, Jake's father's behavior grew even more erratic. His motor skills seemed to deteriorate. When the 47-year-old underwent a battery of tests, the diagnosis was Huntington's disease. The first thing I did is go online and look it up, and I couldn't even read it because there was like three paragraphs on the disease and 10 pages on the caregiver. I, I couldn't even talk. I was crying so hard. Huntington's is a fusion of dementia and ALS. It affects an estimated 30,000 people in the United States. While those with the disease can live into their 60s, it can destroy mind and body much earlier. In September of 2002, Jake was just 17 
when he learned the shattering news. I just was so mad at everything that was going on. I felt robbed of, you know, my dad and felt like it was such a burden on my mom that I just thought everything was unfair and I kind of went into a poor me, everybody feel bad for me for about a year or two. Jake's father would continue to decline. His body, his mind, his speech. He could not be there with his wife when, in 2006, Jake's Wisconsin Badgers went to the Frozen Four and by a two to one score in the final, won it all. He came up to me and, Mom, do you believe it? I mean, isn't this awesome? And then um, a local news person interviewed Jake um, from Eau Claire. What do you want to say to your dad back home in Eau Claire? Uh, dad, I just want to say I love you and uh, I know you saw the game and, uh, and thanks for being there for me. John was at home and, and he said, I cried. I cried when he told me that. that. That meant everything in the world to me. On November 22, 2007, Jake's parents were watching from a bar in Eau Claire when their son played in his first NHL game and scored. There would be more goals for Jake, but toughness on the ice would be his calling card. I've gotten in fights where it's just because that's part of my job and I've had to stick up for somebody, but then there's been other times where I've legitimately been angry. That anger off the ice would yield to uncertainty and fear because Huntington's is genetically transmitted. Jake knows there is a 50% chance that he has the disease. You good? I would never not give it to my worst enemy. But Jake's father did give it. There he is. To his eldest son. Hey, Luca. Hey, how you doing, This is Jake's older brother, Luke, now. At 30, a victim of Huntington's disease. Luke, now we know, had early onset of Huntington's at about age 14. Luke's At age 17, he had uh, a mental break and became schizophrenic, which is also a symptom of the Huntington's, but we didn't know anything about this. Early onset Huntington's is rare. What it's done to his mind requires Luke to have constant care. It's just tough to have much of a relationship with him. He kind of goes into his into his head, and he he's kind of he hears a lot of voices, and he sits and kind of mumbles to them to himself. There's nothing new going on in his life from day to day. It's the same thing. Mom said uh, she got you using that iPod again. She showed you how to use it again, so you know yeah. how to play that music. See what uh, we all got. Jake, have you been tested for Huntington's disease? No, I haven't. Why has not getting tested been the right decision for you so far? I think, believe me, if I, if I knew I, I would be able to handle it, I would have done it already, but I just, um, I'm just scared if it's a positive test that it's going to consume my life. Uh, uh, with this nasty... Jake and I have really got the closer. We've gotten closer? Yeah. Yeah. We had gotten home from, from being out and his dad grabbed him and said, I'm so tired of being sick. And watching Jake start to see himself like that. That's the last thing that I want. I'm so scared. In July of 2012, Jake and his longtime girlfriend Carly were married. Their decision to start a family will spur Jake to get tested at last. 
I know that he feels guilty and wonders, can I bring another person into this knowing what might happen? The only promise he made to me that I asked that he keep is that he does not bring another child into this world that may have that disease. If I can't go out and throw baseball or football with my kid in my backyard, that's going to be something that's devastating to me, and that's definitely a scary thought. This summer, after training for his upcoming season with the Minnesota Wild, Jake went back home to visit his father and brother. It drains you a little bit mentally, because I'm thinking, you know, is it, how much are they going to have changed? Are they going to be worse? Or talk to him about now. Uh, and he reminds me of that every time I see it. Jake's father and brother now reside in the same assisted living facility, a move necessitated by their continuing physical and mental decline. I love you. I love you too. Love you. Love you too. And so someday, Jake Dowell will bring his loved ones together as he discovers whether or not he has Huntington's disease, an answer that will determine the life he will lead and the way it will end. What would it be like to know that you didn't have Huntington's disease? Oh, it'd be the biggest weight ever lifted off me. Whatever energy that I waste worrying about this right now, I could put into my life and to helping other people. Either can't have it or they have to have a cure in his lifetime because I can't lose him. I just want him to have a long, long life filled with dreams coming true and lots of happiness and I, I believe he deserves that. Someone in our family needs to be able to have that life.